one requirement for juneadaptive.com is that it has to have a contemporary look, but inclusive to that is that anybody can wear it. You know, our tagline is adaptive clothing for people of all abilities. So you have, um, maybe you don't have a disability or you do have a disability, you can still wear that item. So for example, a lot of um, the clothes at juneadaptive.com, you have a disability or not, it's, it's at the end of the day, it's a great shoe or it's a great button down top that anybody can wear because it just looks great. Um, and that's what we're trying to do, find items that are universally designed that people with or without a disability, wherever you are in the ability um, spectrum, you're able to find clothes that are easier to get dressed. I'm Juita Gupta, and this is The Pulse. The phrase, you are what you wear, continues to persist for a reason. The clothes we don as people with disabilities say something about us. Does the world acknowledge our unique bodies? Do we feel pride in our appearance? Do we find clothing at the mall or shopping online that works for us? But in the unique dance between fashion designers and the people they create clothes for, there are also moments of connection. A coming together of artistry, market forces, and the desire to make a difference. In the big business of fashion, there is still room for making clothing for the people we love and using clothing to tell stories about belonging and togetherness. Today, we discuss accessible fashion as a connection. It's time to put your finger on the pulse. Hello and welcome to The Pulse on AMI-audio. This is week two of three of our series on accessible fashion. I'm Joita Gupta. Last week, we spoke to Izzy Camilleri, and if you haven't had a chance to check out that conversation, I hope you do so. But today, I'm delighted to welcome to the program someone whose story brought a tear to my eye. Wendy Wong is the creator of June Adaptive, and she created her line of accessible fashion and accessible clothing given what happened to her aunt. Wendy, hello and welcome to The Pulse. I'm really happy you could take a bit of time out of your day to talk to us today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor. I know your clothing line, June Adaptive, is named after your aunt, June. But before we get into talking about June Adaptive, you have a background in fashion. So let's talk a little bit about you. What sparked your interest in clothing and fashion design? Yeah, um, it actually started in high school. I created a skirt in high school in sewing class, and that was it. I was like, I need to go in fashion. And it sparked over a 15-year career in fashion. And so by the time your your aunt June acquired her disability, where was your fashion career at? I was actually in fashion school at the time. Um, I was learning uh, fashion communications at TMU, Toronto Metro University. And um, my aunt got into a car accident and became quadriplegic. Um, one of the challenges um, that she had was finding clothes that worked for her. She had caregivers that helped her get dressed. And they told uh, me and my family that there's clothes out there that might be easier for my aunt to get dressed. Because I have a background in fashion and I was studying fashion at the time, I said, okay, I got this. I can do this. I didn't study medicine. I don't really understand what you know, the doctors are saying about the medical challenges, but I got fashion. I can solve this for my aunt. So I went to the malls and I tried to find these clothes that um, the caregivers were telling me that were out there, like, you know, buttons at the front or snaps at the back and all these things. And I couldn't find it. And it was extremely frustrating at the time. Um, fast forward to today. Um, I have a mother-in-law that lives with multiple cirrhosis and I find myself in a similar situation where she also has full-time caregivers, um, helping her daily needs, like getting dressed. Um, however, after being in the fashion industry for over 15 years, there is a emerging market called adaptive fashion. Um, I bought some of these items from my mother-in-law and she loved it. And ever since then, I wanted to bring adaptive fashion to more people across the world. And thus, June Adaptive was born, named after your aunt. Tell us a little bit more about June. What kind of a person is she? Yeah, she loved to shop. 
I have a lot of memories of going shopping with her, going to malls and finding the best uh, fashion items. So after she got into that accident, um, it was a really difficult time to find items that worked for her new way of life, but still made her look good. Um, she was a nurse. Um, she was very generous. She was very caring. But one thing was that she really cared about what she looked like and what she wore. So that was a big part of her, her life. Well, I think we all care, at least to some extent, about what we wear and what we look like. So when you think about June Adaptive, how did you get the business side of things started? Because there is a, a lot out there in terms of clothing and fashion. I mean, if you just go on Amazon, you go to a mall, you can, you're can you bombarded with clothing and clothes, admittedly very little for people with disabilities. But in trying to start up a business that would cater to a what some people would argue is a fairly small or niche community, what kind of challenges did you have? Challenges is really just, the biggest challenge for us is getting out there and finding people um, or like bringing our brand out there um, to new customers and with a very limited budget. But back to your question on how we got started, I really leaned on to the community. I started with my mother-in-law first, seeing what her needs are. She lives in a, in a home with other people who live with disabilities. So I actually had a pop-up store there first and I worked or I, I, um, I had conversations with her neighbors and her friends there to kind of understand what their needs are. And in my pop-up store, I brought some samples in and I tested to see what kind of items um, they would like and they would want to wear in their day-to-day -day life. So I really leaned on the community to understand what their needs are to um, launch what's on our website right now at juneadapter.com. And tell us a little bit about your website because Part of it for you was also creating an accessible shopping experience online. So, and, and let me just say that a lot of clothing brands, are their websites are not accessible. So tell us about what makes June Adaptive's website particularly accessible. So I'm really lucky. I have a sister that works in user experience. She's a UX designer and she did a lot of work in making juneadaptive.com accessible. Anywhere from the fonts that we chose, the colors that we use, um, making sure all our images have alt text attached to them um, and a lot of different things that I can't even describe because she she did a lot of that work. But another aspect of it is that we have a phone number too, um, like a phone number available for customers to call in because some people can't place an order online and it's easier to place an order over the phone. So we have that as well. Um, we have a chat option as well. So that makes it easier for people who can't place orders and wants to chat through an order. So we have both the chat and the phone option as well. Um, and other design elements on our website that makes it accessible for customers to uh, use our website. Let's turn to the really fun part, which is the design aspect of it. So how did you actually go about modifying things like skirts and pants and shirts and dresses to make them accessible for people with disabilities? Yeah, so there's a lot of ingenious ways that you can adapt clothing to make it easier to get dressed. Um, I'll start with our shoes, for example. Um, we have the shoe here, a really cute sneaker right here. This is a woman's uh, sneaker that's mainly blue, has laces in the front, uh, peach on the inside. But the great thing about it is that there's actually a zipper that goes from the back to the front. And the zipper, you can open it up right like this and you can get into it without tying the shoelaces um, oh, that's uh, great. at all. We also have these great grip socks over here. So the great thing about these grip socks, they're gray, they come in a set of dark gray, light gray and black, which I don't have on the screen right now. And then there's a silicone grip pattern at the bottom. Um, that's the pattern is a chevron shape. And the chevron grip uh, texture at the bottom helps people grip the floor. So this is great for anybody who's prone to falls, have stability challenges, and need a little bit of grip um, to help them walk around on slippery floors. This is also really popular for people that do yoga or Pilates or um, powerlifting. Um, really great for uh, people that want more balance uh, during their day-to-day -day as well. 
Um, at June Adaptive, we sell clothes for people of all abilities, and this includes kids too, which I love. So we have these really cute um, grip socks for kids. We have one in blue and in gray, also with the chevron silicone um, grip at the bottom. Um, and it's great for the, the little ones out there that have um, that are running around and to make sure they don't fall. So we have these really cute uh, grip socks for kids as well, available at juneadaptive.com. Another customer favorite are our magnetic button down shirts. So right now I have in front of me a blue gingham button front um, button down shirt with sh short sleeves. Um, the great thing about this, it looks like a regular button down shirt. However, there's hidden magnets um, behind the buttons. So you can open up the buttons and close the buttons with one hand and very, very uh, easily. Um, and this is really great for people who have limited hand dexterity to get in and out of tops. And we have them available in women's and men's and both in long sleeve and short sleeve available at juneadaptive.com. Do you have it in different colors? Because that's always useful. Like a shirt like this, and I, I would buy it in five different colors, to be honest with you. Yeah, actually, that happens a lot. Our customers would buy, like, I had a, a customer that bought eight uh, different options because <laughs> they loved it so much. So we have it in white, red, like green, a bunch of different patterns. There's like a navy one, a lot of different colors. Um, so you can uh, look great every day in a different color. Nice. I really like it. Another really popular style is our open back tops. So this is a regular, it looks like a regular um, three quarter length top. It has stripes across with um, the stripes that are in um, like a beige color, navy and pink. Um, the great thing about it is at the back, there's actually snaps that um, help you open up the uh, the top and the snaps are on the shoulder area. So this is for people who have, um, who need help getting dressed. So that's for people like that because it opens up completely at the back. And for people who need help getting dressed, um, some people it's difficult for them to lift their arms above their head to get into a shirt. And this top allows them to get into a top without lifting their arms all the way up up above their head. So if you have a caregiver um, that helps you get dressed, you can get dressed without lifting your arms um, to get in. So this is a really great top option and we have them in a bunch of different styles, both for men and women available at juneadapter.com. And then one last piece that's a customer favorite on our website are our denim, our jeans. So we have this women's denim style. It's in a dark blue color. The great thing about it is that there are long toggles at the side. So for people who have issues gripping small zippers, there's these long toggles that you could just um, put your thumb through and easily open and close the side of the uh, denim and get in easily. There's also loops hidden inside the jeans so you can slip in and out of the uh, of the jean very easily. There's also a pocket on the thigh area. So for people who are mostly seated during the day, you still have access to your pocket because it's placed in the thigh area. So uh, you don't have to reach on your hip area when you're seated. Sometimes it's hard to get into. Um, you can still have a pocket that you can access while you're seated. And lastly, at the bottom, there's a Velcro opening. Um, sometimes it's magnets on different styles, but this one has a Velcro. So you can open up the ankle. So for people who have issues pointing their toes when they get into shoes, uh, or sorry, into pants rather, uh, there's a Velcro opening to help you get through the ankle area. So those are just a few styles that I had samples of that I uh, wanted to show today, but we have a ton of different options, anywhere from recovery wear um, to for uh, styles that are better for people in wheelchairs or in a seated position, 
um, or just people that want an easier dressing options like our magnetic uh, magnetic clothing. Yeah, those are some of the styles that you can find at juneadapter.com. That's really amazing. How did you go about figuring out how to modify things like jeans and shirts? What was your process like there? Yeah, so I work with a bunch of different suppliers and brands that helped uh, design these items. And we source these items and we pick the best of the best um, to go on juneadapter.com. Some of the um, must-haves on our website is that the items must be adapted. So it has some type of technical feature that has um, that makes it easier to get dressed. And we also focus on a contemporary look. Um, We like to be a bit ageless and a bit more fashion forward. So all really great looking styles that are featured on our site. And how do you ensure quality? Because I feel like once someone has bought a piece of adaptive clothing, ideally, unless their body changes, they would like to get many years of wear from it. So how do you ensure some quality control and to make sure that the products on your website will actually last for a long time? Yeah, so we work really closely with our suppliers and we also gather a lot of feedback from our customers to make sure everything we list on our website is of good quality and will last for a long time. A lot of our styles would stand up a lot of industrial um, wash washing and put in um, industrial washing machines. So we make sure our styles are of a best quality because it's important that our customers can Uh, keep those clothes for a very long time. What sort of conversations do you have with suppliers? Do you have to educate them as to why you want clothing made a certain way? And do you ever get any pushback from people saying, but this is such a niche community, it's a small community, it's, you know, like what sort of conversations are you having with your suppliers? Our suppliers are mostly already in the adaptive fashion space. They're already working with the community and they kind of understand um, the importance of creating adaptive styles in the space. Um, however, there's so many disabilities out there. There's not one disability, one adaptive fashion fits all. So we're constantly sharing feedback um, back to our suppliers, listening to our customers of what's working, what our customers are looking for. Hey, like, you know, we want this pant to have a longer zipper because then you have a catheter access or different access to the knees or different something like that. Um, So we're constantly gathering this feedback from our customers and sharing with our suppliers to make sure that we're constantly evolving to include um, more adaptive fashion for more more people with different types of disabilities, just because there's so many different disabilities out there. And it's hard to have uh, one solution that fits all. And it's a constantly evolving process to make sure we're inclusive to as many people as we can. When I was talking to Izzy Camilleri last week, she mentioned, you know, when I started with accessible fashion and inclusive design, people didn't even know the word accessible fashion or adaptive clothing. Uh, And now it feels like we've really come a long way from there. How much has the landscape changed in your view over the last maybe 10 to 15 years? Is there more out there for people with disabilities? Yeah, there's definitely more out there. Um, I mean, when my aunt got into the car accident, it was around 15 years ago and adaptive fashion didn't even exist. People didn't even know what that word was. Now, I think that that term has really surfaced in the last five years and it's still growing. However, every single time I... Um, meet a new customer, they're just learning about adaptive fashion. And a lot of them are saying, wow, I wish I knew about this earlier. So that, to me, when I hear that, I realize there's a lot of education um, required um, for uh, people out there so they know that these options exist. So I'm so grateful that The Pulse is doing a feature like this so more people know that there's actually clothes that help you get dressed a little easier. And there's a lot of... um, opportunity for people to learn more about adaptive fashion. And that's what we're really trying to do at at juneadaptive.com is educate more people about adaptive fashion. And that market share keeps growing. Apparently now it's not 22% of Canadians live with disabilities. That number is apparently closer to 27%, if you can believe it. And everybody's getting older, myself included. So uh, there's also the reality that as we get o- as we age, uh, we, we many of us will acquire disabilities. But, you know, I was thinking about your sneakers and thinking that even though I don't really have 
uh, trouble with shoelaces, I wouldn't mind having those sneakers just to know, so I don't have to bother with the laces because they can be really annoying. Uh, and I sometimes feel like maybe the word adaptive fashion or accessible fashion makes it seem as though this is somehow a niche thing or it's something special. But I almost feel in looking at some of your clothes that anybody could wear it. And that really what we should be thinking about instead of adaptive fashion, maybe we should be making a move towards universal design and clothing. You really hit the nail on the head there of what juneadaptive.com is trying to do. I mean, what I was saying earlier, one requirement for juneadaptive.com is that it has to have a contemporary look, but inclusive to that is that anybody can wear it. You know, our tagline is adaptive clothing for people of all abilities. So you have um, maybe you don't have a disability or you do have a disability, you can still wear that item. So for example, a lot of um, the clothes at juneadapt.com, you have a disability or not, it's it's at the end of the day, it's a great shoe or it's a great button down top that anybody can wear because it just looks great. Um, and that's what we're trying to do, find items that are universally designed that people with or without a disability, wherever you are in the ability um, spectrum, you're able to find clothes that are easier to get dressed. And earlier in our conversation, you said something that, you know, I was kind of feeling shy about asking you the question, but I feel like since you brought it up first, the reality is that budget is a factor. Many people in the disability community are either unemployed or underemployed. And so how do we design uh, clothes in a universal fashion while also addressing the very real challenges around affordability faced by this community? That's a really great question. Um, and I think it going back to making sure the item looks great and somebody with a disability or without a disability would be interested in that style because it, at the end of the day, it's just a really great shirt that helps a lot of people and focusing on universal design. So for example, our magnetic top, a lot of people can wear that top, um, whether they have a disability or not. Maybe they're just like somebody who's in a rush in the morning and wants to save that few minutes that it takes to button up the top and they just want to snap and go. Um, so that individual can wear a top. It's so important to focus on universal design. The reason for that is so we can create one style that would work for more people. And when we do that, we have a volume of scale and we're able to bring our prices down. Um, I know budget is so important, especially for people who live with disabilities. I mean, I've lived through it at least twice. My uh, my aunt that got into a car accident became quadriplegic and my mother-in-law that lives with a multiple sclerosis. It's so expensive to be disabled uh, or it can be very expensive to have a disability, you know, anywhere from wheelchairs, the care you need and everything else. Um, whatever we can do to bring down the costs and find um, more economical solutions to make sure our adaptive clothing is uh, more affordable uh, is definitely something I'm looking to do. Um, that's why I'm so proud to have such a great assortment at juneadaptive.com that is affordable. So um, some of the tops that I shared, you know, the open back top, I think it's under $40 uh, Canadian. Our jeans are under 60 um, we have shoes that are under 60 as well. Um, so very affordable options on our site. They're, our customers are definitely not paying an extreme premium for adaptive clothing. It's still within a reasonable price range. So customers can um, can afford these solutions. And also because it's a good quality piece, it'll last them a long time. And if you have something that's neutral that could work with a, a number of different other pieces, then you can get a lot of use out of that clothing. Uh, speaking of which, what would you say are the wardrobe essentials that someone needs to have? Um, it's a hard question because you have not just clothes for women, but also men and kids. So if you had to pick out a few pieces from each category, what would you say the wardrobe essentials are? Definitely our magnetic button down shirts. Any, I think I mentioned that a few times um, in, in our conversation already, but there's so many people that can benefit styles like that. Um, our grip socks, our anti-slip grip socks are very important um, and popular and essential for anybody. Um, you know, you could be pregnant and you can't afford a fall. Um, those are really great, uh, a really great style. Or maybe you're just doing an exercise or a workout. You're doing yoga or Pilates um, and you can't afford a fall. 
uh, or you have a disability, um, those are grip socks are very important. And we have those grip socks available for kids all the way to adults, men and women. Um, lastly, our um, easy on shoes. So I said that because we have zippered shoes, Velcro shoes, no lace tying shoes. Any of our easy dressing shoes are really important essentials for our wardrobe. So what's next for you, Wendy? You seem to have you seem to have accomplished a lot with June Adaptive, but is there still more that you'd like to do with accessible fashion? There's so much I want to do. I want to be able to help as many people as I can. And I want more people to know about adaptive fashion through juneadaptive.com. So for next year, for 2024, it's really about increasing our reach and our brand awareness so more people can know about juneadaptive.com. Um, also expanding on uh, expanding our assortment. So bringing more styles uh, for people who live with disabilities. So really understanding what are the gaps right now and what customers are looking for that they can't find and adding them to our website. That sounds amazing. Wendy Wong, thank you very much for being on the program. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being on your show. There goes Wendy Wong. She is the creator and founder of June Adaptive, juneadaptive.com, to look at some of those great clothes and designs. That's part two of our three-part exploration of accessible fashion. We'll wrap things up next week with a conversation with Alexa Jovanovic, uh, who talks about her designs that incorporate Braille into clothing. I hope you'll stay with us for that conversation. If you have any feedback for me about this episode or anything you've heard on the program, you can write to us at feedback at ami.ca. You can give us a call at 1-866-509-4545. That's 1-866-509-4545. And don't forget to leave your permission to play the audio on the program. If you are on X, formerly Twitter, you can find us at AMI Audio and use the hashtag PulseAMI. Or you can find me on X at Joetha Gupta. If you are listening on a podcast or you're watching the YouTube channel, please don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified about future episodes and leave a comment down below. Whatever way you would like to communicate with us, we would love to hear from you. Ted Cooper is the videographer for this episode of The Pulse. Jordan Staves is our video editor. Our technical producer is Marka Flalo. And Andy Frank is the manager of AMI-audio. And I've been your host, Joita Gupta. Thanks so much for listening.